What's happening guys? My name is Nicholas Trenot and in this video we're going to take a look at how you can build your very own custom reinforcement learning environment using OpenAI Gym. Let's take a deeper look as to what we'll be going through. So in this video, we're going to build a custom reinforcement learning environment using the OpenAI Gym class. We're then going to take some previously written code and train up a DQN model to interact with it. And then we're going to test out this model. Let's take a look as to how this is all going to fit together. So we're going to start out by downloading some reinforcement learning starter code. So we wrote up this code inside of the reinforcement crash course tutorial. We're then going to build up our custom environment within that same Jupyter notebook so that we can play around with it. We'll then train a DQN model using TensorFlow and Keras RL, and then we'll test that out to see how well it performs. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so in order to build our custom reinforcement learning environment, we're mainly going to be working inside of a Jupyter Notebook. But in order to keep this short and sharp, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reusing the code that we wrote in the Keras Crash Course tutorial, specifically for the DQN model or the actual training part of this tutorial. So if we actually take a look at that code, which is on GitHub, the core thing that we're going to be doing is changing this environment here. So in that tutorial, again, link in the description below and I'll include a link somewhere above. The core thing that we did in that tutorial is we trained a reinforcement learning model on the cart pole environment. So you can see that it's cart pole. Rather than doing that, we're actually going to build our own custom environment, but the large majority of this code will remain unchanged. So we'll be able to reuse this. So in order to get things started, what we're first going to do is clone this repo down. And again, I'll include this link in the description below. So it's just https forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash nick knock knack forward slash tensorflow keras dash reinforcement learning. But again, I'll include in the description below and also inside of the Jupyter Notebook. This will all be available. Um, just check the links below. All right, so we're gonna grab this. And then what we're going to do is open up a new terminal if you're on a Mac or a command prompt if you're on a Windows machine. And we're going to type in git clone and then our link. I think I included a space in there. So git clone and then the link to that GitHub repo. So in this case, you can see that I've got that link copy there and hit enter. And this will clone that repository into the same directory that my command prompt is currently at. So in this case, I'm on my desktop. So it's going to be on my desktop. And if I actually open that up, you can see that I've got my deep reinforcement learning Jupyter notebook there already. But what we're going to do is we're going to open this up inside of Jupyter. So if I just scroll back to Jupyter, you can see that that folder is appearing there as well. And if we step into that, we can open up this deep reinforcement learning tutorial notebook, which has a lot of good stuff. Now you can see here that this has got a sort of full blown walkthrough to build a reinforcement learning model for a predefined environment, specifically as I was saying, cart pole. We're going to be focusing on actually changing this and building our own custom environment. Now you're probably thinking, what custom environment are we going to be building? Well, let's take a look. So the scenario that we're going to be solving revolves around the bathroom. Now, I'm sure you've been in this situation before. You've gone, you've woken up, you brush your teeth, you've gotten ready to go have a shower. Now, what happens is you end up trying to find the optimal temperature to have a great shower. You're just messing around with the dial. You can't seem to get it right and eventually you just end up fed up. We're going to be building a reinforcement learning model to solve this. And specifically, we're going to be building the environment to solve this. So our goal is to build a reinforcement learning model to adjust the temperature of our shower to automatically get it inside of an optimal range. So our environment is all going to be to do with actually changing the temperature of our shower to get it within our optimal range. Now, in this particular case, our optimal temperature is going to be between 37 and 39 degrees, and our shower is going to go for 60 seconds. So if you've ever worked with any of the other open AI environments like Cart Pole, like Space Invaders, you know that they have an episode length. So in this case, our episode length is going to be 60 seconds. So we're going to try our best within that 60 seconds to get within that 37 and 39 degree range. Now you're probably thinking this is easy, just make it 37 or 39. Well, we're actually going to include a little bit of noise in there. So we're going to have temperature fluctuations. So say your mom or your dad or your girlfriend or boyfriend go and open up a tap and then drop the temperature of the shower. We're going to be accounting for that. In this particular case, we've got three actions that we can take. So we can either turn our temperature down, we can leave it the same, or we can turn it up. So it's going to be three different actions. 
And really our task at the end of the day is build a model that keeps us in that optimal range for as long as possible. So again, we're going to be building this up step by step. So if you haven't fully grasped what we're sort of doing here, I'll walk through it as we're actually building. Okay, so now what we're going to do is jump back into our Jupyter Notebook and we're going to start kicking this off. So if you don't have a reinforcement learning environment set up already, then I'd highly recommend running through this dependency install. So in this particular case, we're just going to hit shift enter in this cell and this will go on ahead and install all of our dependencies. So just give that a second and that's now done. So over here, what we've done is actually installed a four key dependencies. So we've installed TensorFlow 2.3.0. We've installed OpenAI Gym. So this is going to be the main environment that we're going to be working with or the, the thing that allows us to build our custom environment. Keras and then Keras RL2. So Keras is a deep learning environment that makes it pretty easy to build uh, AI models or deep learning models. Keras RL2 gives us a number of predefined agents to actually build reinforcement learning models. Okay, so we can minimize that. Now in our next cell, we've got a few imports. Now we're going to tweak this slightly and import some slightly different dependencies. Okay, so we've imported some slightly different dependencies there and specifically we've imported the ENV class from Jim. So the ENV class is going to be sort of a placeholder class that allows us to build our custom environment on top of it. We've then imported two different spaces. So a discrete space and a box space from gym.spaces. And so this is going to be what allows us to define the actions that we can take within our environment, as well as the current state of our environment. Then we've imported NumPy. So to do that, we've written import NumPy as NP. And then we've also imported random. So this is going to allow us to test out our random environment or what random actions look like down there. Okay, so now it's time to start building our custom environment. So in this case, we're going to be building an environment class so we can instantiate this anywhere. And we're going to be defining four key functions inside of that. So the first function is going to be an initialization function. And this is going to be the function that gets run automatically when you create a new instance of your function. We're going to implement a step function. And this is what runs whenever you take a step within your environment. We'll also implement a render function, but we're not actually going to do too much in there because we don't want to visualize or we're not going to bother visualizing. And then the last function that we're going to define is a reset function. So this allows us to reset our environment. So let's go on ahead and create these placeholders and then we'll actually build them up step by step. Alrighty, so that's our template environment set up. So you can see here that we've gone and written, what is that? Uh, so it looks like eight, so nine lines of code. So the first line of code defines our shower environment or our shower class. And in this case, we've written class, shower, env, and then we've passed through our gym environment here. So this basically allows us to leverage a lot of the environment capabilities that come from the gym environment. So sort of some standard Python class-based functionality there. And then we've gone and implemented four different functions within or four different methods within that particular class. So the first one is our init method. In, so inside of here, we're going to be initializing the actions that we can take, the observation space. We're going to be initializing our space, so specifically our temperature, and we're going to be initializing our shower length. Then we've got our step function and our step function basically defines what we do whenever we take a step and how we treat actions. Our render function, we're not actually going to implement anything in here, but if we wanted to do um, visualizations for this particular environment, this is where we'd implement them. And reset is where we reset our environment after each training run or after each episode. So the first thing that we're going to do is start by setting up our initialization environment. Actually, one more thing. So I've just written pass against all of them at the moment because we're not actually doing anything, but we're going to get rid of these in a second and actually start writing up these functions. So the first one that we're going to do is our initialization function. So we're going to get rid of this pass and then start writing up some stuff. So let's do it. Oh, 
Okay, so that is our initialization function done. So we've written four additional lines of code there. So the first one is setting our action space. So in this case, we've defined an attribute to our environment. So by defining self, dot action space and we've set that to equal discrete and then we've passed through three to that discrete space so our discrete class actually comes from our gym spaces so what we had up here and discrete basically means that you're going to be able to have three different values so zero one or two so when we actually go and apply this to our step function we're going to be treating zero as dropping the temperature down one as leaving the temperature steady and two as increasing the temperature We've then defined our observation space and inside of our observation space, we're basically going to hold our current temperature. And so this is going to define where our shower is currently at. And so we'll be able to use that to uh, tweak and produce our reward. Then we've defined another attribute. So in this case, we've defined our state and we've set our starting temperature to 38 degrees plus a random integer. So to do that, we've written random rand int minus three and then three. So this gives us our bounding box. And then last but not least, we've set our shower length to 60 seconds. So by defining self dot shower length equals to 60, we're basically saying that our shower is going to take 60 seconds. Just a little bit more on this observation space here. So the first space that we used was discrete and discrete is going to give us three discrete values. So zero, one or two, because we passed through three. Now box is going to allow us to have a continuous value across a whole range of spaces. So in this case, we've defined our low value. So in order to do that, we've written numpy, oh, we need one of those there. So in order to do that, we've written low equals numpy.array. And then to that, we've passed through our low value, which is zero. And then we've specified our high value. So to do that, we've written high equals numpy.array. And then we've passed through 100. I'll show you what this looks like in a much better example when we actually set up our environment. So you'll actually be able to see the difference between um, what using a discrete space versus what using a box space looks like. All right, so that's our initialization function done. The next function that we're going to implement is our step function. So this is going to run every single time we actually take a step within our environment and it's akin to actually taking an action on our environment. So to do that, we're actually going to pass through our action and then we're going to implement the rest of our step function. Alrighty, so that's our step function done. So the first thing that we did is we passed through a new parameter, which was our action. And so this is going to be zero, one or two, which we've defined in our action space up here. And then what we're doing is we're applying that action to our state. And remember our state is really our temperature. So in this case, if our action is zero, we're actually going to subtract one and drop our temperature by one. If our action is one, we're going to subtract one and then we're going to leave our temperature the same. So effectively what's going to happen is if we pass through action zero, then what we're actually going to be doing is subtracting one, which means that we'll actually be subtracting negative one from the temperature. If our action is one, then we're going to be subtracting one. And this is sort of what this negative one is here. We're going to be effectively be doing nothing. And then if our action is two, then what we're going to be doing is subtracting one again, which means we'll raise our temperature by one. So this is what this particular line is doing here. So it's applying our action to our current state. We're then reducing our shower length by one second. So in order to do that, we've written self dot shower underscore length minus equals one. So this is sort of some Python functionality to drop a number. And so this is effectively reducing our shower length by a second. What we're then doing is we're then calculating our reward. Now you can play around with this, but in this case, I've kept our reward calculation pretty simple. So what we're doing, we're checking if self.state is greater than or equal to 37 and self.state is less than or equal to 39, we're setting our reward equal to one. Now remember self.state is our temperature. So what we're basically saying, if our temperature is greater than or equal to 37 degrees and 
our temperature is less than equal to 39 degrees, then our reward is going to be one. So that means we're in our optimal temperature range. If not, then our reward is going to be negative one. So effectively what you're going to see is our model is going to try to converge so that our temperature is always within this range. Then what we're doing, we're checking whether or not our shower is done. So to do that, we're writing if self.shower length is less than zero, then we're setting done equal to true. Else we're going to be setting done equal to false or leaving it as false. So this basically checks whether or not our shower length or shower time has expired. So remember we're reducing it by one over here. So ideally once it gets to zero, we're going to be setting done equals to true, which means our shower is done. Then we're applying a little bit of temperature noise. So to our state, remember that's our temperature, we're going to be adding a random number between minus one and one. And so this will serve to fluctuate our temperature up and down in reaction to people maybe changing the temperature, opening a tap. So it sort of mimics real life a little bit more in that sense. We're then setting a placeholder for our information. So this is something that the open AI gym requires. And then we're returning all of that information. So in order to do that, we've written return self.state. Remember self.state is our temperature. We're returning our reward that we set up here whether or not our episode is done, which we've got from up here, and then we're passing through that info dictionary that we've got here. So this means we've now gone and implemented our initialization and our steps, so the two key functions. The last one that we're going to do is our reset function. So in this case, our render, really this is where you'd implement uh, visualization stuff. So say for example, you're working with Pygame. Actually, let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do a tutorial on how to do this with Pygame or a more visualization heavy environment. So the last thing that we're going to do now is actually implement our reset. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, that's our reset function done. So basically what we're doing is we're resetting our temperature. So we're setting self.state equals to 38 plus or minus three degrees. Remember the same line that we had up here. And then we're resetting our shower length to 60 seconds and then we're returning that state. So now that our custom environment class is done, the next thing that we actually wanna do is actually go on ahead and test it out. So in this case, we can test it out just by creating a new instance of our shower environment and all things holding equal, we should successfully see this work. So we're going to type ENV equals shower ENV. And it doesn't look like we've got any errors there. And this basically means that we've now gone and successfully created a new instance of our custom environment. So we can actually go and play around with this now. So remember we set up our action space and our observation space. And I said I'd explain this in a little bit more detail. Well, the best way to see the differences is by actually sampling the environment. In order to do this, we can type in env.actionspace.sample. And this will give us examples of the results within that action space. So remember our action space here is discrete and two that we've passed through three. So ideally what we'll get back is three different values. So we've got two, we've got zero, we've got one. And you can see just by sampling, we're getting different values within a discrete number space, so a whole number. Now, if we change this and wrote observation space, you can see that to that we're getting a continuous value, which is between our low value, which was zero, and our high value, which is 100. So what we're basically saying here is that our temperature of our shower can be anywhere between zero and 100 degrees. So ideally 100 is gonna be super hot, but you sort of get the idea. Now, the next thing that we actually wanna go on ahead and do is actually play around with our environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this cell here, which is legacy from our carpool environment. And we're going to delete this as well. And we're just going to change a line of code within this sort of uh, sample run through. So what we're basically going to do is rather than leaving our action equal to random choice zero equals one, we're going to type in env.actionspace.sample. And so what this is basically going to do is it's going to run through 10 different showers. So we've set episode equals to 10. So it's going to do 10 showers. It's first up going to reset our environment, set done equal to false, set our score equal to zero. And then what it's going to do is it's going to render our environment. So we can actually comment that out because we're not actually going to be rendering anything. We're then going to take a sample action. So either zero, one or two, we're going to apply it to our environment and then we're going to calculate our reward. So if all things holding equal, this should run successfully. So you can see there that our environment's gone through really, really quickly and it's gone and run through a number of different showers. 
Now in this particular case, remember that if our shower isn't within that optimal range, so 37 to 39 degrees, then we're going to get a reward of negative one. So in this case, we can see here that our score is negative 60. So that means that for the entire 60 seconds of our shower, we were outside of that optimal range. You can see in this case, we're taking a couple of random steps, we got minus 24, and then the best one that we got was minus eight. So that at least means that for some of the steps, we might have been within that optimal range. Now, again, this entire code is inside of the full reinforcement learning tutorial. So if you wanna see how we wrote this up, by all means, check that out. We're not gonna spend too much time on that. We're actually gonna test out our environment now. So this is our shower environment completely done. Now there's one last thing that we need to do in order to actually get this to run with our Keras RL model. So within our build model function here, we're actually gonna import all of these dependencies. Then what we're going to do is we're going to comment out this model.add flatten step and we're going to define a couple of key things. So we're going to define our states and our actions. So let's go on ahead and write these out. All right, so that's done. So what this basically gives us is the shape of our states as well as the number of actions that we've got to play with. So in this case, our states, we've really just got one value and with our actions, we've got three different values that we can place. So in this case, we're gonna get rid of this layer and we're gonna update our deep learning model. And that should run successfully when we go through the rest. So what we've basically done here is we've removed our flattened layer and then we've just skipped straight through to this dense fully connected layer. So again, if you wanna see in more detail how we actually wrote this up, by all means, check out the crash course tutorial. We've then gone and passed through our different states. So this basically means that we're going to be passing through our temperature to our deep learning model. And then we've left everything else the same. So ideally, if we build up this model, so by running the next cell, you can see here that we've now got a deep learning model that's going to take in our temperature as an input, and it's going to produce three different actions. So zero, dropping our temperature, one, leaving our temperature the same, or two, increasing our temperature. We can then pass this through to our Keras RL model without too much change. So if we run through these cells here. Oh, and if you get this particular error here, so sequential object has no attribute compile time distribution strategy, just roll back up to your model up here, delete this by typing in DEL model, and then rebuild your model. And that should now run. So you can now see that we've now taken our custom environment and we're now able to train a DQN model. Again, this, how we built this up is all in that crash course tutorial, but you can see now that we've now successfully built a custom open AI environment, and we're now training a model to get our temperature right in that sweet spot. So ideally what you should see is that this particular reward here increases over time. So you can see that right now it's on about minus 58. Ideally, you should see it drop a lot more. It's probably never gonna get perfect or get into the huge number of positives because remember that we take a random step and if we're outside of that optimal range, then we're going to get a negative value. But let's let this run and then we'll test it out. Alrighty, so that's our model finished training. So you can see that we started off with a reward of negative 0.6308 and we sort of ended up right at the end with negative 0.5816. Now this model probably isn't going to hit a perfect run rate because remember, we've got some random noise being applied. And at the moment, our model only allows us to go up and down one degree at a time. So we can't do a huge change to our tap. So this is potentially where you might be able to improve this custom environment later on in the future. But again, I've tried to keep it really, really simple. Right, so if we now go scroll on down, we can now go on ahead and test out our environment. So this particular cell here is actually going to go on ahead and test out our DQN on our custom environment. So you can see by running it, it looks like our average reward is about minus 58, minus 60. And again, we've got that randomness applied in there. So at this stage, it might not be performing the best, but that about summarizes how to build up a custom environment using OpenAI Gym. Now, just to recap, so what we've done is we've gone and copied down our template repo from GitHub. We've then gone and defined our shower environment. We've then gone and built up our DQN and updated our build model function and gone and trained our model and tested it out. Now, again, you could play around with this environment. You could tweak how you actually make the adjustments. You could uh, reduce the noise. So say, for example, you didn't want any noise at all. You could actually get rid of this completely here. And that about wraps it up. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release future videos. 
and let me know how you went about building your custom RL environment using OpenAI Gym. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.